My mother and I were very close, actually. We, we dated right up through college. <laughs> Mr. Lindberger was having an affair with his secretary. I said, oh, no, Mom, why? You know, I'd never heard of an affair um, in Barrington, Rhode Island. I didn't know they ex I knew they existed in New Hampshire because my grandmother Gray had loaned me her copy of Peyton Place. And I thought that that's where all affairs happen. But in Barrington? I said, come on, why, Mom? Well, I'll tell you, because if Mr. Lindberger uh, touches Mrs. Lindberger, they, they just get an electric shock, that's all. So, they were having, and so he couldn't do it with her and had to do it with the secretary, but he was still a good father and came home every night uh, late in his Chrysler Imperial with the big uh, spare tire in the back trunk and he would take care of his, his five kids and, and Bobby Lindberger was my friend and Bobby had a parakeet. But he had a different relationship to his parakeet. Mine had already died. He would take his out of the cage and let it fly around. And just as it got real happy in the room, he'd, he'd uh, take a wet towel and kind of uh, twist it up and just go, mm, pow, like that. And the bird would go, doo, poo, off the window like a feather bullet, you know? And then he'd go another, mm, pow, like this. And the bird would be like this big B-52 dragging its tail, tail feathers coming out. And then he'd put it back in the cage to rest up. And I'd watch. I knew we had a different relationship to our pets. But I never said anything. I just was watching it, taking it all in, I guess, saving it up to tell you all. And I wasn't saying a word. I'm so afraid that the audience will not stay with me in, in my pauses and my quiet moments. It's just a terrific need to hold hmm. their attention. And we go have a vanilla Coke. <laughs> I, I, want, I, I think that I want to uh, entertain them and please them. I like making them laugh. Um, I, I really want it to be an entertainment for them that also leaves them with something that is some, some sort of content that isn't just, uh, that it's not like Chinese food, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know what I want from them. I like yeah. the money. I certainly <laughs> do. I like to make a living from doing sure. this. Good evening and welcome to A Personal History of the American Theater. Being my history, I'm Spalding Gray and I'll be telling some stories and associations around plays. Um, the, some of the plays, about 50 of the plays, I think that I was in between 1960 and 1970. The titles of the plays have been printed on these cards. Uh, the cards in the box have been shuffled and I'm going to begin by revealing the first title. He Who Gets Slapped. Um, I played he, and I got slapped. Uh, this was at Emerson College. I, I, this was my first big role, my sophomore year at Emerson College. Um, basically, it was about an ugly clown named he in a circus, a Russian circus. It was a Russian play, and this clown falls in love with a beautiful bareback rider, Consuelo, and it's unrequited love. Consuelo doesn't love the clown back, and he gets very despairing and poisons everyone, including himself. It was delightful. I loved it at that time. It was right in my meat. And I was playing he and then I was ugly, ugly, ugly. And one of the reasons I was ugly is because of the makeup changes that they would have to do. Because I would have clown white, then straight makeup, then clown white, then straight makeup. At the end of the three or four acts, my face was peeling. I really looked bad. You know, And one of the things that people had to do was slap me, because that's my shtick. And I guess I was either popular at Emerson then, or I don't know, I don't remember being popular, but no one would really hit me in rehearsal. And I remember Louis Lopez Sapiro was directing it, and he was sitting out, you know, watching, and he said, hit him! Hit him! I want to see someone hit him before this rehearsal's over. And no one would do it. And finally he leaped up from out in, out in the audience and just went, Phoom! I didn't turn, I, didn't, I saw stars, the only ones I've seen in the theater since. I was completely out of it. I, he said, all right, now you may hit me back. I wasn't into that sort of thing. I would sit down behind that curtain as it was just about to open on a kind of Freudian divan, light an authentic Russian cigarette. I could hear the audience out there, feel their tension, feel the whole, it was a limbo just between life and life, or life and the theater. Somewhere sitting there, that was the most precious and delicious moment. That I could have sat in all night. I didn't care to have the curtain open. <laughs> 
And for years after that, I used to have recurrent dreams of waiting on a dark stage, hearing the audience mumbling beyond that dark curtain about to be revealed. Were you nervous about seeing me in the first place? Mm -hmm. No. no. You, did, did you think that I could, was a good actor or could act? Not very good. I I'm thought you were was... absolutely nuts. Yeah. How anybody could make a living in the theater, particularly one that was a shy, backward sort of a young fellow, I, I, I just knew you couldn't do it. But you were very shy and very backward and uh, quiet and not particularly interested in... Uh, in uh, anything. No, that's right. Yeah, I didn't have any interests. You didn't have any athletic interests, which uh, mm. the other boys did a little bit. Well, I played a little baseball. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were you were But I was like third string in the little league. Yeah. You know? Catching that was an interesting because I always saw myself as passive receiver, and to some extent, the monologues have grown out of being a catcher. Because you picked the, the position that required. Expensive equipment. Yeah, to protect me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I liked having that ball thrown at me, though. I, I think I, I want to be the one always to catch, not to pitch. And to some extent, yeah. there was a certain feminine aspect in that. Well, I, I, I don't know about that. But that was, <laughs> I mean, the that was about the extent of your athletic abilities, as I remember them, mm -hmm. as a boy. I can remember riding in a little straw basket on the back fender of my mother's bicycle as she rode along Barrington, the Barrington River. I was about four years old and she was riding along and crying out and celebrating and shouting because we had dropped the bomb on the Japs in Hiroshima and that meant World War II was over and that both my uncles, Tinky and John, were coming home from the war. Nothing is that bad if you can still talk about it and get outside of it. And uh, the only problem is that I know <laughs> I won't be able to tell about my death unless I have a very good medium. And probably that's the ultimate uh, horror, is that I'll have to stop talking. <laughs>